Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today we're going to take a look at the least developing countries and a very interesting conference is going to be coming up in 2021 in Doha, Qatar. My guest today is an expert on this conference and on the issues confronting least developing countries. My guest is Ms. F Undersecretary General Fakita Otoy Kamanu, and she is a national of Tonga. She is the high representative for the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. Madam Undersecretary General, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate you being yeah. with me today. Thank you so much. We, yeah. we did this right as you came on your job a little over three years ago, and yes. we'll talk a little yes. bit about that. But let's, let's start talking about the, the least developing countries. So often we read articles yes. on least developed countries. Uh, how do you classify a country as a least developed country? Yes. Are there three or f two or three criteria? Yes. yes. So um, the, the least developed countries are, are uh, classified as um, the poorest um, uh, countries um, in 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 the world, and um, uh, the classification is is uh, um, the the three main uh, elements of the classification. There's a, a, a GDP per capita um, cutoff point. I think it's uh, it's about a thousand two hundred mm -hmm. US uh, dollars uh, per annum, and uh, and then there's a, a human asset uh, index which looks at some. Um, health and um, education um, uh, criteria, and then there's uh, economic vulnerability. So um, if a country uh, meets two of the three, um, or if their uh, GDP is more than twice the, the, the um, uh, threshold, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they, uh, they moved uh, or graduate out of the, out of the group. Um, currently, there are, there are 47 uh, uh, countries in the LDC uh, group, but it's uh, it's wide uh, uh, geographic uh, distribution. Um, the there's 33 countries from from the African uh, region, mm -hmm. and there's nine countries from the small island uh, developing uh, states, and then there are other countries in the uh, Central uh, Asia. Uh, a region, um, Haiti, mm -hmm. Haiti, and and uh, and Yemen, uh, also uh, um, classified as uh, LDCs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see, there you say forty-seven. Is that correct? Did I? That's right. Forty-seven. 47. Yeah. And there are one hundred ninety-three countries yes. in the UN General Assembly. Yes. Yes. And of course, you have your landlocked developing countries and your small island developing states. That's right. So yeah. and they can cross over there. You can That's right. The, um, the, the least developed uh, uh, countries have countries that are from the landlocked. Uh, there's, there's 17 countries from the landlocked. And uh, as I mentioned, um, nine countries from the small island mm -hmm. developing uh, states. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the grouping of the uh, landlocked uh, um, and the um, um, least developed and small island uh, developing states is 91 countries in total. Mm -hmm. 91 in total. Yes. I see. Yeah. And you, you brought up an interesting term, graduate. Yes. And I, I, I would bet every country wants to graduate to the next level and uh, yes. to move away yes. from the least developing uh, yes. LDC status. Yes. Uh, how many in the past have graduated, uh, just roughly? Yeah. So um, in the first 47 years of, of mm -hmm. the group, only five countries have um, graduated, uh, but the assessments are done uh, every three years. So the last assessment was un undertaken in March um, mm -hmm. uh, 2018, and now we have 12, 12 countries uh, at various stages of, uh, of graduation. Oh, 12? Yes. Oh, that's very good. Yes. <laughs> so, um, it's going in the right direction. It's, it's going in the right direction, but I, I think, um, you know, learning from the experience of uh, the previous uh, mm -hmm. graduations, um, there needs to be uh, a really good uh, transition strategy put in place, mm -hmm. and uh, and then also you need to um, uh, to ensure that uh, there is a s sustainability in the in in the uh, graduation uh, as well. I think uh, we've learned quite a lot from the previous five countries because once they graduated, you know that's it. You, there are mm -hmm. uh, certain preferences um, that uh, they lose, um, trade uh, preferences and other 
uh, preferences, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, concessionary uh, financing and and uh, and ODA. And uh, previously, um, you know, the the the, the cutoff point is when you graduate. Uh, but you know, on reflection, we uh, mm -hmm. uh, we realized that we needed to continue to support um, uh, these countries, even uh, after they graduate, maybe for a phased uh, period of of, mm -hmm. of uh, three to four five years. Um, so so there's been uh, a lot more attention um, by various um, financial institutions, development partners, uh, to looking at at how to ensure that uh, the graduation mm -hmm. process is the sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very a good point because it's been shown over the years in the development area and, and through UN programs, yes. uh, AID programs, yes. uh, humanitarian programs, that when countries come out of transition, or in transition, for example, yes. if a country's had a civil war, like, yes. li li like Liberia, we'll just take yes. as an example, that is so important that they might make great strides, but they still need some support yes. to help them to make sure that they'll yes. have a relapse yes. to go back into yes. a civil war or something like that. That's, but that's right. It's very important to provide that bridge, the bridge yes. services. Yes, and that's it, right. It's, it's good that you're doing that. Yes. yes. Well, I want to make sure to get your website out for our viewers who would like to go there. You've got a lot of great information. It's www.unohrlls.com. Dot org, yes. and we're going to put that on the lower yes. thirds at the bottom of the screen yes. so that our viewers can go to that and check it out. Mm -hmm. But it's very informative. Now, in the opening, I mentioned that uh, in March yes. of 2021, yes. you're going to have a major conference of the least developing countries. Uh, tell me about that yes. conference, yes. What, uh, yeah. what it'll be in Doha, Qatar. That's right. And what will yes. be the theme of it? Yes. So um, these uh, vulnerable groups of countries, um, we, uh, the member states and the international community um, develop a 10-year uh, program of action, mm -hmm. uh, which um, really is the blueprint you know, for, the, for the LDCs uh, over the next 10-year uh, period. Because the current uh, program, uh, Istanbul Program of Action, uh, uh, is at its last year um, mm -hmm. this year and then uh, so next year uh, uh, at the uh, conference uh, they'll be signing off on the next 10-year program uh, for the um, LDC uh, group and um, it's uh, an opportune time because it also coincides with the last 10 years of the 2030 uh, mm -hmm. agenda and, and as well as the um, decade of uh, action which the uh, Secretary General uh, launched uh, earlier uh, this year, mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know it, it it really provides um, a, a platform uh, for the member states and the uh, development partners and and the international community, uh, including the the United Nations uh, system, um, to really focus on on um, these uh, vulnerable uh, group of countries, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's often said that you know the success of the 2030 agenda will be dependent on how uh, successful uh, the uh, sustainable development goals uh, are achieved in, the, in, the, in these groups of uh, vulnerable countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the sustainable development goals are really sort of the, the guideposts, uh, to yes. me anyway, I don't yes. know how other people view yes. them, but there are 17 logical, yes. practical goals yes. that were developed by the UN General Assembly. I think all 193 countries yes. voted for them, as yes. I recall, yeah. in 2015, and they yes. came online, in, or 2014 maybe, yeah. and they came online in 2016 yeah. and will run until 2030. Yeah. And so we're now a third of the way through that, yes. and we have 10 more years to go. And of course, uh, 2020 is a major year for many reasons, but these sustainable development goals are so important to eradicate poverty, yes. to eliminate hunger, to promote gender equity, yes. to empower women, to uh, reverse climate, hopefully reverse yes. climate change, and so many other important goals to help really to create a better world. Yes. And so these are all being incorporated by all of the LDCs and all the countries yes. you work with, I Th assume. That's right, yes. They've, they've uh, I mean, the S SDGs uh, was um, signed off by all the, the member mm -hmm. states, um, both the uh, developed and, and uh, developing uh, states. 
There, there's things that happen, and we see one right now that we hadn't planned. Well, climate change is getting worse by the day. It seems like every time I pick up a newspaper, yes. I see a scientific yes. report says, uh-oh, the North Pole is melting faster, Antarctica is melting yes. faster, the oceans are rising. We see that uh, cities, all of the uh, cities on the, uh, that are on their maritime cities, so to speak, are taking precautions to see how they can stop the yeah. oceans from coming in Miami, Florida. Yeah. You've got it in uh, all over B the Bay of Bengal, yeah. Bangladesh, yes. uh, just all around the world. Uh, has uh, how has climate change played into this yes. issue uh, as far as uh, uh, maybe slowing down some of this growth or yes. some of the gains? Yes. Well, um, the least developed countries are among the most vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, to. Uh, the impacts of uh, climate change uh, because you you have the uh, natural uh, disasters but then in some of uh, the countries you you have uh, problems with drought and um, and and flooding in addition to the you know the slow onset of uh, sea uh, level uh, rise mm -hmm. um, you know so uh, I think one of the the, the biggest um, challenges is, uh, you know, the shifting from fossil fuel to uh, renewable energy because this um, group of countries are also um, half half of them don't have access to electricity. Uh, so so uh, energy is 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 a big issue uh, uh, with them uh, as well. Um, and so uh, climate change features uh, quite. Uh, quite large in the uh, agenda for the, for the least developed countries. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, the, the poorer countries are feeling, really feeling, everybody's feeling climate yes. change, but they're yeah. feeling the brunt of it, and they didn't contribute that much to it, really. It's That's the developed right. countries, mm -hmm. the United States, Canada, yes. the European countries, whatever. Yeah. They, they were the ones who really enjoyed the fossil fuels, shall yes. we say, yes. and helped create mm -hmm. uh, this climate change and uh, climate warming, global warming yeah. is what's happened. What, what um, can the developed countries do? And by, by developed, I'm talking about the richer yeah. countries, um, economically developed, shall we say. Yes. What can they do to provide assistance to the developing countries to help them to develop the technology to combat climate change or to incorporate clean energy, yes. green energy, and that uh, whatever might work to help reduce that carbon footprint? Yes. Yes. Well, um, the the least developed uh, countries, of course, you know, they uh, at the uh, Secretary General's uh, climate summit in mm -hmm. September uh, last year, they had a LDC package, you know, which contained uh, uh, really uh, ambitious um, targets and 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 commitments um, uh, um, towards. Um, uh, uh, dealing with with this uh, uh, climate uh, climate issue, and um, you know, the the it's been costed uh, in terms of uh, the amounts that are required uh, to support um, the uh, uh, dealing with the uh, um, impacts of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of of climate and. Um, I think uh, it's it's uh, shifting from from uh, uh, you know billions to, to uh, trillions of of uh, dollars, um, and uh, and so uh, the support can be provided in in the areas of uh, technology, um, and as well as in the in the areas of technical uh, assistance and uh, capacity uh, uh, building. <laughs> And 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 then the in terms of the uh, financing, so those mm -hmm. are some of the main areas where where support is is most uh, needed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or Community Access Television Station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra campus television hookup, or you just have a computer, you have a website, you like our shows, and you'd like to share them, please feel free to do so. 
Global Connections Television is provided at no cost as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're taking a look at the least developing countries and some of the challenges that they're confronting and to see what's going to happen next year at a major conference in Qatar. My guest is an expert on these issues. The Undersecretary General Fakita Otoy Kamanu is the high representative for the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. Madam Undersecretary General, we've uh, covered a lot. We <laughs> have a lot to cover. And, uh, I don't want to leave technology too fast. Uh, are there other things that can be done to provide assistance to, the, uh, to these countries? And by assistance, I mean something that's going to help them and help everybody. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, well, um, the, uh, I think one of the, uh, the challenges in, mm. in uh, supporting these groups of, of, uh, of countries is, uh, you know, ha having a, a really good coordination mechanism mm -hmm. in place because, you know, there are many uh, stakeholders uh, involved uh, in, in providing uh, support in, in, in the, m the main uh, sectors uh, that uh, are of priority to these uh, uh, groups of, of, uh, of countries. Um, so, you know, the, the United Nations uh, system, um, you know, various agencies uh, provide, you know, a lot of uh, support um, as well. Uh, and then uh, at, at a bilateral level, um, um, and then uh, there's also regional uh, support uh, to uh, th uh, these uh, groups of, of, of uh, countries. Um, and then, uh, you know, they, they're uh, in addition to the uh, direct grants, um, mm -hmm. you know, you have uh, uh, loans and, uh, and then you have also uh, technical assistance and, and other aid in kind. So um, there is, there is uh, quite a, a, a lot of uh, support uh, this, this that, I that is provided. And of course, there are targets. Um, these targets for the level of ODA uh, that should be uh, um, uh, provided to mm -hmm. the, uh, the least developed uh, countries uh, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. ODA, Official Development Assistance. Official uh, Development uh, Assistance, S is yes. Is seven-tenths of one percent of the yeah. gross of, domestic of the product? product, yes. Okay. And, and I, I think half of, half of that uh, should be uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, targeted uh, to the least uh, developed uh, countries. I think um, only maybe five or six um, countries mm -hmm. have met uh, the target. So, um, you know, there's still uh, some uh, commitments that need to be fulfilled um, in that, in that yes. uh, area as well. Um, direct foreign in investment is also uh, quite important. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, exports of of the LDC countries mm -hmm. because it's um, currently less than one percent of the global um, trade. Um, so um, you know the 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 ambition and the and the targets that have been uh, set uh, by the uh, member states mm -hmm. and and the uh, global uh, uh, community um, should uh, really support. Uh, these groups of countries to uh, to move out of the um, LDC category uh, and graduate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, seven tenths of one percent, which is yeah. a very modest sum. Yes, and every country yes. developed yeah. economically a developed country can afford yes. that. Yeah. And as I recall, that came out of Monterey, Mexico summit many years ago. But as you yeah. mentioned, six only six or seven. Yes. most of them are Scandinavian countries that That's right. have actually yeah. complied with that. Uh, that very modest target. Yes. So they, it would be very helpful if they could do that. Yes. Well, as you as you look over the horizon here at um, what's upcoming and what what I know we're dealing with climate yes. change and funding. Yes. Those are probably the two major yes. issues. Yes. Do you see other challenges confronting yeah. the least developed yeah. countries? Yeah. I think uh, one of the main um, challenges that uh, that uh, the uh, least developed countries uh, face is, is uh, you know, uh, structural uh, transformation and, you know, to, to sustainable uh, development. And, and uh, you know, that has been uh, uh, something that, uh, that 
and and it's caused you know by by uh, the uh, lack of ability to deal with the the shocks you know whether it's economic or financial or uh, environmental uh, uh, shocks um, so the the, the um, economic uh, vulnerability um, then there's the uh, environmental uh, vulnerability including uh, impacts of uh, climate uh, climate change um, then uh, you look at uh, in the area of energy um, and uh, uh, also in, in terms of um, governance, governance is also one of the priority um, uh, areas uh, for uh, these uh, groups of uh, countries. Uh, broadband and connectivity is also uh, an uh, important uh, priority, um, you know, that will uh, support uh, the uh, uh, economic uh, development of the um, LDC uh, countries and then you know the science technology um, and uh, innovation um, and then you have the uh, uh, um, the um, issues that are uh, cut across uh, cross-cutting issues that cut across you know um, like human uh, human rights mm -hmm. um, the in the area of, of uh, uh, agenda uh, and uh, disabilities and, and, and youth that also need to uh, to cut across uh, all the programs uh, for these groups of countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 we always try to focus in on climate change and empowering women, gender yes. equity. How important is it for uh, for every country to empower women to be part of the solution yes. to deal with these problems yeah. that we're confronting? Yes. Um, it's very important for, for, for the uh, least developed countries and um, there are certain areas where they've really progressed. For, for example, in uh, you know, the uh, percentage of um, uh, women uh, represented in parliaments, I think the LDCs uh, have you know, quite a uh, good uh, record um, uh, in, that, in, in that area. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there are certain other areas um, for example, the violence uh, against women, mm -hmm. and um, and in the also in the area of uh, economic empowerment of of uh, women, where, where they are um, lagging behind and still, uh, you know, need a, a lot of support um, to uh, help the, uh, these countries uh, mm -hmm. uh, overcome uh, these issues. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, we did a taping right about a little over three years ago, yes. right? She came on the job. Yes. Hardest question yet in the last 30 to 40 seconds we have less <laughs> left. What major change or changes have you seen in your three years w w working with the least developed countries, the yes. landlocked countries and small island developing states? Yes. Well, um, <coughs> last year we were able to, um, to conduct the, the midterm review of, of the um, uh, Samoa pathway for the small island uh, developing uh, states that was in, in September uh, last year and then we did uh, also a, a midterm review of, mm -hmm. of the uh, Vienna program of action for the landlocked uh, developing countries. Uh, so so uh, the score scorecard for, for both these uh, uh, groups of, of countries is that you know there's been a mixed result Mm -hmm. um, so in some areas there's, there's been uh, quite a lot of uh, development, uh, but uh, you know the, the, the challenges are, are, are still mm -hmm. um, there's still mm -hmm. a lot of challenges that we need to uh, deal with, and you know for the small island developing states, of course, um, oceans is also uh, quite a, a, a big. Um, area mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of interest. They are small islands but uh, large um, ocean states and, um, and so the climate, uh, uh, climate uh, uh, impacts of climate is, is still a, a major priority for the s small island developing states. And then for the um, landlocked uh, developing uh, countries it's issues with infrastructure and, um, and uh, uh, transit and access uh, two ports um, uh, for uh, uh, export and movements of, of goods uh, mm -hmm. and, and services are still, uh, there has been a, a lot of improvement, but uh, there's mm -hmm. still uh, some, a lot of challenges mm -hmm. to be dealt with.
Well, Undersecretary, Undersecretary General Fakita Otoi Kamanu, you're dealing with some very important issues, major issues. These are life and death issues. And I want to thank you so very much for being with me today and bringing yes. us up to date. And thank you for a very thank interesting you. and a very informative program. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television. <laughs>